And good evening, everybody. This is Michael Filigaro. I am with LogicalSignals.com and TradersHelpingTraders.com. And this is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 for Thursday, September 9th, 2021. The market continues to work through what is best labeled as a minute fourth wave correction. It is turning into a very complex affair. And so I'm going to try to bring us up to date and see where we're headed from here. First off, I need to say that uh, the thinkorswim platform, the TOS platform that I use to do my charting on, um, has switched over to the December contract. So that's why you're going to see a gap and basically lower prices than, than where uh, the September contract closed at, uh, during our regular session. <clears throat> Nonetheless, we continue to count a minute fourth wave correction. And within that, I've now reassembled what we've gone through. And because we, we had this and then we had an initial uh, slide, this actually happened in Globex overnight and where it went down and made a new low beyond this, uh, which is where we ended yesterday or the low from yesterday. Um, the market came back down, made a new low, and then rallied strongly, and then started to come back down again. And in fact, now has now moved to a new low below uh, our global session low from this morning. And so what I've done is I've just had to take, and take down the labeling one additional degree. So these are now sub, sub minute level. And still the same, where it's an A, B, C, we get a triangle that's an X, an additional A, B, C, but it is wave A of, so it's sub-minute A of minute four. Then we have sub-minute B of minute four, because this is now unfolding in what is appearing to me going to be a five-wave structure. And that would suggest that it is a C wave. That's kind of what I'm hoping for. And now I'm just going to bring my chart. Let's go to the 30 minutes so we can see it all the way down. And so again, sub minute three, or excuse me, minute three ended here. And now we're looking for this minute fourth wave. And again, this is all a part of three. So I'm going to go back out to the hours so I can see the whole thing. You can see one, two, and this three. The three was a very long, very extended wave. So complex four, sure, why not? <laughs> So anyway, so we do have this complex structure, A and the B, and now we're coming off in C. Now, C waves, when we want to relate it to the A wave, that their most common relationship is that it will be equal in length to the A wave. And that comes in right here at 4465 to 66. So it's not too much further down from where we are. But then we have additional at 4450 and 44.41. I don't necessarily want to see it coming down towards 44.26, although our break zone is at 44.15. I don't, the market should not break below 44.15 if indeed it's intent or the wave count as it should just by the wave count that I'm using that we still have a minor fifth wave up to complete the minor four, which ended right there. So in order for this to remain a fourth wave, it can't break below the endpoint of wave one. That's the rule. If that's the case, then it's no longer a wave four. So right now, we're still in good shape. And even if it comes down here, even if it comes down to 41, we're still in good shape to have uh, a decent rally and again, move it to new highs. Now, the market, I'm sure the feeling in the markets over the last, uh, since Labor Day, is more fitting with what people believe happens between um, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. We have a weakness in the market. That certainly is what we are witnessing. We are seeing it. There's always going to be a lot of other reasons that people are going to toss out there. That's the purpose of the press. Uh, financial press is to just tell us what, what the world thinks is going on. 
But in terms of Elliott Wave, Elliott Wave takes, does not take fundamentals or news into consideration. What it will show you is that a, a perspective move is due and going to happen. In this case, it was a fourth wave correction. And so that's what we've been counting down. Now, has it expanded further than I originally had anticipated? Yes. Originally, I thought that 45, 10, 75 completed it, but we were, we were shown otherwise, that that was not the case and it started to break down again. So that we can all chart and I can put in what I believe it is. And now that's exactly what I'm doing, that it was a complex wave A of my new four. It was a complex layer because it was a double ABC down. Then we got a pretty normal B wave, and now we're getting a pretty normal C wave. And that C wave should continue, at least through tomorrow, I would imagine that we're gonna see lower levels again tomorrow. And I don't know how busy it's gonna be, because again, it's a Friday, it's a weekly expiration Friday. Um, and so no, normally we, we don't get a whole lot of activity during those, during Fridays now. Um, but that's not a hard and fast rule, so we can always hope we'll get some activity and get some good trades or trading opportunities. So for tomorrow, I do think we will continue to move lower to complete wave C. And I'm just kind of bring that open. Which I wish my computer would just be friendly and do for me. There you go. That's all very readable now, isn't it? Okie dokie. Let's try it this way because I want to take a look inside There. I want to take a look inside this, this wave. So if I get anything, I get wave one, two, maybe three, four, and this is five. Could be. Maybe a little bit more. Because again, we have that support just down below. And maybe we get there during Globex, or maybe we get there tomorrow morning. But I am pretty much trying to count a five wave structure down. And if this may be just completed wave one of C, wave two of C, and now we're in wave three of C, we get a four and a five. So there's a couple of interpretations. So we're just gonna let the market unfold and tell us. And um, everything is kind of lined up for it to continue to lower. All of our moving averages are now turned uh, down. And so when it is complete, we will be then looking for an initial five waves and that will be based on the hourly chart, an initial five waves up on the hourly chart to give us an indication that number one, the lows are in, and number two, minute wave five is now underway. If the market continues to break down and start to break below all of these levels and comes down and breaks uh, 44.15, and the exact number is 44.14.75, then upside will be negated for now. And more than likely, this point will have completed the entire, all of the sequences on the way up. And it's not necessarily how I would expect the market to start coming off, if indeed that was the high, but it may be the case. It could just be exactly what's happening and we will figure it out once the market tells us. But right now, I'm just saying that if it breaks below that level, I would expect number one, some, uh, some stronger acceleration lower, uh, and for the market to uh, begin to just really break through any support levels that we might have. And upside, if we get down here and we can count five, then or any of these levels, then I'm gonna be looking for the market to turn and to begin to head higher. And of course, then we're gonna be looking at our moving averages where they are from down there, but also um, we would expect some I, 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 at least a decent rally to get us back above 4,500 and well above 4,500 and possibly even up as high as the 200-day uh, moving average. That would be a good start. So for tomorrow, again, I'm not expecting a lot of um, activity. It should be pretty much on the quiet side as it is an exploration. Um, but so the surprise would be is we get a lot of trading opportunities. Um, but I think we'll be narrow on both sides. I think our ranges will be tight again, um, but I, and initially we might see everything in the morning and then it just falls into a range and 
and things expire for the day. That's where I'm going to leave it. Our next update will be on Sunday.